I ain't come to play with you. Life challenging, but I wouldn't trade with you. Trade. Early, I'm up. Yeah. I can't spend the day with you. I'm out of my business. Uh. I ain't getting paid with you. No, I come to fight. Yeah. I ain't finna play with you. Man, I gotta come clean like I a nice with you. I've been on my everybody drop when I drop. Yeah. Look at Shorty, she uh. support, uh. bruh. Lifting up. <laughs> never not on my grind. New York City time. Another brother better. You will never find. Uh. I've been in my bag like groceries. Competition shouldn't take shots, take notes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Reporting live from the winner's side. Ready, try. Keep a different vibe. Is you down the ride, down the tide. You will never know. You ain't never try. Work it out. Hit the gym. Hit the field. Hit the wind. Hey, yo, I need that. Big chips, man, I need that. Hustle hard. On the job, you can see that. On my head is real good. We don't need your feedback. They clear the way with my crew coming through. What I do? Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on E8. Well, it was a common sight in the 80s and 90s. Not quite as frequent since, but it's back. Playoff football in the Bay Area here at Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between our visitors. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And our home team. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. And got his man complete. 33 yards that time. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Looking to throw on second down. Francois, he'll take a shot for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Francois, they'll roll him out right. On the crossing route, complete. It's Terry. A little glimpse of his athleticism there and what they're going to have to deal with. He can use his legs to dance around back behind the line of scrimmage and beyond the line of scrimmage. And wouldn't you love to get a copy of their defensive scouting report going into the week? Because that's been stressed the whole time. Keep him bottled up. Keep him in the pocket. But it's the first drive of the game and emotions are running high. Someone forgot that, trying to make a big play and gave up a bigger one instead. Here we go on second and 12. Rolling to his right. Throwing over the middle. And it's incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Looking to throw, Francois. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Back to throw. Francois, well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And this defense delivers a turnover on downs on the very first drive of the afternoon. Going on the ground with Homer. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down to throw on second down. Perry, and he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Give him three on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. And again, this time to the tailback. 
And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Being chased out left. Throwing deep for Murray. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Murray. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it. But in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. We're scoreless after one. Ain't no such thing as a loss. We take a win, <laughs> Looking to throw on second down. Brand Swamp. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. The Bucks on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Looking to throw. Francois. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Off the play fake. Perry. Pass. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, Cowboys. A big play there. 43 yards as his guys are first out of the scoreboard. Here this afternoon. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage dial up some of those plays try and go to those spots and get your offense moving now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete that one covers 24 yards it's a first down now a play fake here on first down blitz coming and down he goes they come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. Back to throw. Francois. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Looking to throw. Francois. Now the pressure comes, and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. 
They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? He's going to loft one deep left side. He's got a man complete. A surprising... <laughs> Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Between our visitors and our home team. With that, let's get you out to Silicon Valley. Levi Stadium is... All right, coach. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the so-called Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between our visitors and our home team. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And a glance at the tall signal caller, standing 6-6. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section. What the columnists write? Possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again, Lawrence, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Back to throw, Lawrence. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Time will tell if that's an interception that rattles the rookie here. First drive on the road. And you know the discussion going into the game? Centered on, okay, let's get out nice and easy. Take care of the football. We're on the road. You're a youngster. Let's not make mistakes early. But now the conversation will shift to, okay, put it behind you. Move on. Long way to go in this one. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Throwing now is Murray. Out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And this results in six. Touchdown. Kyler Murray, 28 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. 
And maybe the defense got so caught up in him throwing the football, they forgot he can take off, too. And you often hear about the quarterback being the unaccounted for guy as a runner. Well, even on the passing play, he's unaccounted for as a runner, and he turned it into a nice game. A very nice run, and it turns in to six points. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the play that polished it off was the touchdown run by Kyler Murray. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7 0 the score as they start first and 10. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. That makes him now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. Now Brown. Excellent work on the run back there, 33 yards. Now the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. On first down, it's Brooks. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. The throw over the middle taken in. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Murray's going to keep this himself on the RPO. Gets this one to Morris. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense. Well, as a lineman, they are trained. You've got to stay close to home. If you're more than a yard downfield, they're going to toss that flag, and they did there. Murray's going to keep this himself on the RPO. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. To try again after the sack. Murray looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. 23 yards to pick up there. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On second down now, it's Anderson. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. On third down, it's Brooks. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And in the end, the finishing touch, an 11-yard run. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Six 
The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. With it is Brown. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten at their own 44. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. Touchdown, Jaguars! Hollywood, Marquise Brown, 53 yards. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. As Denver comes back out here offensively, this is a team, Charles, that finished the season 7-9. and nine, Won four of their last five to get to that mark. Really what killed their chances was that 0-4 start to the season. A couple of those losses were really heartbreakers in the final seconds of the game. And they were nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They're not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Now this throw caught left side. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Off play action. Lawrence. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, partner, let's put a bow on the Super Bowl for Kansas City. What a comeback win. Yet another come from behind victory for Patrick Mahomes and company. An absolute heartbreak for San Francisco. Didn't Madden predict Kansas City would win the game? Yes, 35-31, I believe they predicted. I felt like most of the predictions I saw had the game in the 30s, so a little bit lower scoring than we expected. But a lot of fireworks down the stretch, all by Kansas City. But how about San Francisco? Had the lead in the ball, under 12 minutes to go, and held Kansas City to 10 points through three quarters. And somehow, they're winging their way back to San Francisco, trying to understand how they lost that game. Yeah, not only did Kansas City win it, but they end up winning it by 11 points. They, they didn't see that coming at all. The Broncos send out their punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. This is taken around the 12.
He had his sights on the end zone, no doubt, but is brought down after a huge return there. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and ten on the short side of the field. They'll run on first down. Brooks. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. To throw on second and six, Murray escaping the pressure right. He's going to take off with it. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. They'll get six on the play, and it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. So instead of forcing the field goal, it'll be first and goal. Yeah, the force was trying to make something happen that just didn't need to, right? I mean, plays happen, let it go. It's over. Instead, he creates a penalty. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. And now Murray's going to set up to throw. His pass caught at the four. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch. But got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. In for the score. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Typically down to the first half, I might say, oh, you at least need a field goal out of this drive. But they're down to the point where they need a touchdown, don't they? Yeah, and normally you know me. I mean, you've been around me for a while now, right? Unfortunately. I'm the, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But normally I'm the one pr uh, preaching patience. Yeah. You know, take your time, first half, you still got a chance. I think they're out of patience here. This has to be a drive that gets a touchdown. So if you're the play caller, you're going to that portion of the sheet that says big-time plays, specials, anything you can use to get yourself back into it. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Looking to throw. Lawrence. This pass complete to Higgins. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. This is fielded at the seven. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one, maybe not the hard-fought battle many had hoped for. This has been blowout city thus far, but still more football to be played. Who knows what could happen as we send you right back out to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in this second half. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. Now a big reason why they've been so successful, this defense hasn't been able to contain him when he gets outside of the pocket. So true, and that's when it's really difficult because defensively you can have a game plan and try and account for all the things you've seen on tape, the way that they run their plays, even his running. But when it's a play where you just can't really say, okay, that's how the play's supposed to go, what they call broken plays, that's when the X and O doesn't work. That's when their Jimmy is better than your Joe. With that incompletion, a chance to mention the awards. Now with the season over, Lamar Jackson, as we speculated, he's the MVP, coach of the year, John Harbaugh, Lamar's coach. Michael Thomas, Stephon Gilmore, Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year, Offensive and Defensive Rookies of the Year. That went to Kyler Murray and Nick Bosa. And the Comeback Player of the Year, Charles, Ryan Tannehill, no surprise there. Not to mention the number one award that the NFL gives out, the one that they give the most, that credence isn't the right word, the most attention to, and the one that they want trumpeted the most. That's the Walter Payton Man of the Year because that represents the totality of a player in the NFL, not just what they do on the field, but off the field as well. And that goes to Calais Campbell, the defensive tackle for the Jacksonville Jaguars. What a great award. Congratulations, Calais. Here we go on fourth down. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. Oh, on the defensive side, that is so deflating. Not only is it deflating, they've got to look in each other's eyes on that side of the ball and take each other's measure. You've got them backed up, perfect situation, and what they said to you on the other side is, we don't think you can stop us. And that's caught inside the 30. It's a game of 35. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush, a lot of passes completed been an easy day for him. First down. Here's the run with Anderson. Room here to run. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Rodney Anderson, 28 yards as his guys continue to pour it on. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. 
Let's get to some Hall of Fame talk while we have a second, because last week we mentioned the 15 guys that we knew were going into the Hall. Five added. Isaac Bruce, Steve Hutchinson, Edron James, Steve Atwater, and Troy Palomalu. You, you think about it, CD. For Palomalu, it was his first year of eligibility. People knew he would go in. Atwater was his 16th year. He had to wait a long time. He certainly did, and I often wonder about the psychology of it all because when you're young in your career, meaning young retired, right, these things mean something to you, but I don't know if they hit for the same impact as it will for Steve Atwater. 16th year. Now, I think Steve would like somewhere to be a happy medium. Maybe the 8th year would have been a lot right. better, but the bottom line is the older you get, Boy, imagine the emotions running through there, the validation. Probably haven't had the applause in a long time. That's going to come back to you now. Troy Polamalu, he essentially stepped off the field and into the Hall of Fame, but it doesn't matter. Bottom line is getting there. Congratulations to all. This is taken at the 18. Great blocking on the return. It springs him for 25. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. The last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me, trying to get to the airport. That's the roads would be fairly that's, clear that is by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. A big time run there by Anderson. 43 yards. So after the big play, look at this. All the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. And we'll get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's go. The Broncos on the field ready to start their next drive. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Care if you're taking it in round one, you're undrafted, whatever. As a rookie quarterback in this league, you're going to have games where you face adversity like this. Lessons. All the time you're going to face these lessons. The key for this guy is will he be able to bounce back in the next one? Because right now, this has not been his game. They'll get four back there on the run, but now they're looking up at a third and 12 situation. Back to throw. Lawrence. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. The one with the dive look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. Well, that looked for a second like he might take it all the way, but as it stands, it's still a massive return. And this offense is going to be set up with a first and 10 inside the 15. On first down, it's Brooks. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run for it with Anderson. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Back now here in Santa Clara. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. 
On second down, it's Brooks, and he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run as his guys continue to pour it on. So another score there, and often you talk about that. Oh, he takes off with it. It's a fake. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. Partner, they're up big. They snap the ball from the 15 for a regular PAT, yet they fake it and get it. Is the kicker's leg tired? What's going on here? Uh, but defensively, now with this deficit, now you had two more onto that. They fake the PAT. That stings a little. It definitely stings, and I know the guys that I played for, they wouldn't be as mad at the opposition as they would have been at us for allowing that to happen. On first and ten, Lawrence. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. From the gun on third down, Lawrence looking for his running back, and he's got it. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Let's go. I think everyone in the stadium saw that big hit coming. And I, as a former defensive back, have to admit I'm a little disappointed. He actually was able to hold on to the ball. He brought the lumber on that play. Give my man a whole lot of credit for taking the hit and possessing the football. And picking up the first down. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it third down. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. Looking to throw. Lawrence, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense, I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. He had his sights on the end zone, no doubt, but is brought down after a huge return there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Hey, come on out here, come get some. Come get some. Come on here, come get some. He don't want it. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. To throw on second and six, Murray. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know that playing people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy? forever other things they're trying to figure that part out now by the way last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted we're going steak tonight i'm in all right the extra point splits the uprights and that will extend this big lead out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity of this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Second and 11. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Back to throw. Lawrence. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. Throwing on first down. Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. You know, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a scotch of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. So they're going to come to the line here, and it appears trying to go for it on fourth. On fourth down, Lawrence. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. The there he goes, left side. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead will swell by one more. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25, to the 26-yard line. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. They are down big. They have not scored a single point. I don't know. Are they so defeated at this point? You just want to get in the locker room and get the heck out of here. That is one. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. So plenty of smiles for the folks here as they head for the exits. It's a victory for their hometown guys. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, up a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Santa Clara.